So go to the App Store or your Play Store if you've got an Android phone and download the Smart Eye Protect app. When you run the app for the first time it will uh, guide you through the process. So just follow that through and then it will search for your, uh, your gateway. Give the gateway a name, I'm going to call it Office. Put in the default passcode and there we go, we've got this system I've just put on and my own system at home. So we log into the office system by touching on the office button and then when you get uh, logged in you'll get a prompt to assign a new password so put yourself a new password in there take it off the default. So now we're logged in we can see we've got no modules added to the system so we click on the plus symbol on the top left hand side of the screen and you've then got a list of the available modules. So let's add a siren first of all you'll get a guide on how to pair the siren to it go ahead and do that then hit the pair button and then once the siren is, is paired up you can give it a name whatever you like, uh, the location and then save that so there we go that's the first module added to your alarm system uh, you touch on the button and it takes you to the uh, siren screen shows you the available controls. Next we're going to add a window and door contact. So again we've got the guide on how to initiate pairing. Wait a few seconds, you'll then get the uh, paired screen. Give it a name and location and once again save. So when we go back to the main screen we can see that the sensor will be shown as a, as a module and you'll also see a, uh, a little symbol showing you whether it's been activated or whether it is locked. Now to add a PIR sensor, again you uh, tap the pairing button, remove the plastic tab and that begins the pairing process. So it'll find it, give it a name and location. And now we'll add a power socket, so just plug it into any power socket, press and hold the power switch so it starts flashing, and then it'll pair. And let's add the key fob now, the remote control key fob. Okay, so now let's finally add some CCTV cameras to the system. Now cameras are ever so slightly more complicated to add and the reason for this is all the other modules communicate directly to the gateway using radio signals. But the CCTV cameras use the house Wi-Fi, so to enable them to work we need to set up the Wi-Fi password on the cameras. So how do we do this? Well the cameras come supplied with an Ethernet cable, a network cable, that you simply plug into the camera and the other end into your broadband box or router or any network point. Then you add the camera as normal using the app as I showed you for the previous modules and then uh, that's, once that's on the system you can then go into the setup for the camera and then add the Wi-Fi password in there. So now let's go into the camera setup screen and set up the Wi-Fi. So you go to the main status screen and hit the top right hand button, the edit button, the little square with the pen in it and that brings up the edit cogs for each module. So touch the one for the camera and then you've got another cog one there to go into settings, so hit that one. Enter the admin password, which is the default password again. You can change this inside this uh, settings screen, I'll show you that later. So here you've got your camera settings screen, about halfway down is the Wi-Fi button. Hit that one, it will then do an automatic scan of any local Wi-Fi signals. Once it's found that, you can then select your one, hit the password, and save by hitting OK. Once that's saved you'll get a little prompt reminding you to unplug the Ethernet cable and boot cycle the camera. So unplug the network cable, power down the camera, power it back up again and it'll be on Wi-Fi. 
Okay, notification emails. This is, these are the addresses that the system will send emails to when it gets a motion activation or an alarm trigger. So go into setting and then go to notification setup. Uh, enable the user email button. Turn that to on. Enter as many as five email addresses that you want the system to send the notifications to. And then turn not use notifications button on and save. The system can be easily armed by clicking on the little padlock on the top right hand corner of the screen. When it's green it's unarmed, when it's red it's armed. And as you see you get a 30 second countdown to, uh, to arm it and you can then choose whether to disarm or to part arm. To choose which sensors and modules are used for full and partial arming, go to the scenario screen. At the top of the scenario screen are three quick set buttons that mirror the key fob remote control options. The presets are arm, camera and panic. So to edit the presets click on the edit button top right hand corner and then on the green cog and here you can see you can, see, you can add or take away any modules to use in the arming and below that the partial arming setup. To activate or to arm any of the presets just touch on it and that begins the arming process. If you touch on one of the sensor buttons or the camera buttons underneath the three presets, that takes you to the IFTTT screen. IFTTT stands for if this then that. This is a way you can set up custom scenarios using the sensors and modules uh, to do then take action. So for example you could have a, uh, a PIR sensor activating a light, turning the light on, or you can have a CCTV camera uh, picking up motion and then telling all the other cameras to start recording and turn the lights on. Or you could have it turn any electrical item on or off from any sensor or motion activation. The power control sockets can also be used uh, using a scheduler. So with this you can program uh, times it switches on, it switches off. And there's also an option to have a auto on off. So if you're using it for lights or radios or whatever while you're away on holiday, you can have it uh, do randomly on and off, turn things on and off to give the impression there is someone at home. And you can program as many schedules as you like, as long as they don't overlap. Uh, you can choose different days, add in different times and just keep adding as more as you want. So you can have uh, plug number one coming on and off at whatever time on a Monday to Friday, different times weekends. Plug number two can be doing something else. So you've got complete control over all of your power uh, controls in your system. So using the CCTV cameras, as you can see the camera screen on the app shows you the image from the camera itself. Under the screen are some function buttons. On the left you've got the snapshot button that saves a photograph to your, to your mobile device. Next to that is the speaker button, that's for listening to the audio from the camera itself. Welcome to HD CCTV. Next to that is a record button. Now, if you've got an SD card in the, in the camera itself, that will begin recording to the SD card and it'll put a little red dot in the top right hand corner of the, uh, of the screen there. The microphone button is so you can speak back to the camera. There's a little speaker built into the, uh, the two models of camera. The two internal models, the external doesn't have a speaker. Uh, so press and hold this, you can talk and then release to listen. Now underneath these buttons are any power controls or any sirens on the system. So you can manually, if you're sit, sitting there watching your camera, something happens, you can manually turn lights on, turn things on, set the siren going. The camera that has pan tilt functions, the SHC200, has an extra button just underneath the screen. Just next to the record button is a uh, button that allows you to both record and recall preset camera positions. So you can, you can literally move the camera around by just swiping on the screen, get to the position you want, press that button, hit record, and that records the point, and then you can then go to that point and, and always go back to the same place. So that's ideal if you've got different positions in a room you need to monitor. One final point to make on the CCTV cameras is quite a cool feature that because they're using Wi-Fi, you could add cameras from one system into your own system. So say if you're the sort of person with a holiday home or you had a home and a business to protect, you could view the cameras from both premises on the same app. Uh, so here is a screenshot from my, my own alarm system. That's my lounge and that's my dog lazing on, the, on my armchair. 
Uh, now in my system I have two of my own cameras and one camera from the office. So we have uh, one camera we've just seen in the lounge there, second one is looking out the window and the third one is in the office here in a different location about 20 minutes drive from where, where my house is. So as you can see we can see all three locations uh, from the same screen. Okay so now let's take, take a look at some recordings from the cameras themselves. So if you uh, go to the event screen and then just wait about a minute while it gathers in all the recordings from the cameras. Don't forget these are Wi-Fi cameras so when you log in it's just going to ask the cameras to send the recordings across to the system and then about a minute or so later they should appear and you'll see them here as, as links. Simply touch on the, one of the links and it then plays back the recording. So it gives you the camera number, the time and the date and then you just touch it to play, play it back. And here's one final one just showing you some night vision from the office camera there. If you want to save a recording, click on the edit button top right of the screen and press the download button and downloading begins. If you're using an Android device, the video file is saved to your SD card. If you don't have an SD card in your, in your Android device, it will not save. If you're an iOS user with an iPhone or iPad, the file can be viewed by connecting your mobile device to a computer and open iTunes and go to the apps page and scroll down and you'll see the file there. The file the system throws out is a AVI file of 1280 by 720 pixel resolution. So if you're a Mac user, you'll need to use a conversion software such as AVI to Any Pro or something similar to convert it to a QuickTime MOV file. Let's take a look at the advanced features. So we'll go to the uh, settings screen and enter the admin password. You can change this in the next screen. This brings up a, a bunch of buttons and let's go through them. First one is IP setting. This shows the network settings for the system, not sort of thing you need to be messing with really. If you do mess it up, choose DHCP and that should reset it for you. The security settings allows you to change the uh, password for logging in, the admin password, and also to enable the pin lock function. The pin lock will prevent anyone picking your phone up and having access to the, of the app. They have to enter a pin code before they can get the app open. Next would be notifications. This is where you would put in the email addresses of the people that you would want to have notifications of any activity from your alarm system. Just a note for iOS users here, if you disable notifications on this screen, no users will receive notifications, even if they're enabled on in your iOS system settings screen. The schedule screen will allow you to program any power modules, any power sockets. Uh, here you can program on time, off time, and you can put as many of these in as you want. There's also on this screen an auto on off function. Now this is the sort of thing you'd use when you're on holiday and it randomly turns these power devices on and off at different times throughout the day and night. So it makes it look like there's someone home. Next is the firmware update button. This allows you to check for latest firmware and install. Uh, as you see, we've got the latest version on this, uh, this test rig we've got here. Uh, next we have the remote style. This enables you to emulate the remote controller in the app. So if you enable it, when you go back to status screen, you've then got the buttons emulated there. Finally, we've got the about screen. This gives you the firmware version being run on the system at the moment, and also a couple of links to the user manual and the quick start guide to help you through the uh, setup and operation of the system. Let's have a look at the setting screen for the CCTV cameras. So click on the edit button on the status and then choose the blue cog. Next click on the cog again and that takes you to the advanced screen. So enter the uh, default password. And OK. This is the advanced setting screen for the camera. So the first one you see is the admin password. This is for the camera, so you use this to get into this menu screen. Next on this screen is the time zone and daylight saving. I don't need to go into too much detail about what they do. I'm sure you can work that out for yourself. And next one would be device security code. This would be the, the password for this device. Default, you know what that is. I recommend you change it to something else. Next is the video quality. And here you've got four levels of video quality for remote viewing. The environment mode that lets you choose between indoor camera, outdoor camera, uh, and if you're indoor, you've got both 50 hertz mains and 60 hertz mains. In the UK, we're using 50 hertz, so set it to that. 
The low light enhancement has got five levels of enhancement. We found that level one is absolutely fine for all applications we've used. However, there are other levels there should you require them. Screen orientation, this allows you to flip the image if you've uh, mounted the camera upside down or back to front or anything like that. You've got the full setting to take it any one of the four ways you need to. Next is Wi-Fi. This is where we've uh, earlier on we've connected the camera and got it on the Wi-Fi. That's the setting screen there. The camera has its own uh, notification system. Here you can enable it with PIR or software. So it's going to be motion detection or using the, cap the PIR on the camera. The one model of the camera doesn't have a passive infrared on the front of it and that's the one with the pan tilt zoom motion. Next you've got email settings. This is so the camera can send emails of uh, notifications to you. And then you've got the SD card setting so you can format the SD card the mode that the SD card runs in, whether it will overwrite or whether it will get to full and stop recording. Then there's device profile settings where you can save the, uh, the your settings as they are or you can load in previously saved settings. And then finally you've got the device information that just tells you about the SD card and also the version of the camera itself.